and india fortunately we have made giant streets in the field of technology all around but there are certain issues because of which our social progress has been stalled halted and these issues emerge from the arena of our society which unfortunately have derived some notions from the past some misconceptions because of which lot of divisions have been created in the society now these divisions which have been created in the society in the name of region in the name of religion in the name of language they are coming as a big obstacle for our progress towards a better society we all know india has made a long journey from kingdoms feudal society to the industrial society and in that last many decades the type of journey we have made is really phenomenal at the same time we are seeing that in the society lot of focus lot of distraction is coming in the name of divisive issues which have not anything to do with the social progress these divisive issues actually lead to violence and this violence is basically founded on hatred towards certain sections of society now how is this hatred generated this hatred is generated by using something from the past something from medieval history something from the pattern of society something from the global world so i will focus myself on couple of things which i think we can overcome to make our society better for example from the medieval times the things which are taken up that okay there were some kings who were very bad some kings who were very good so recently i came across lot of things about one great king of india uh, his name is maharana pratap of course kings have been good kings have been bad kings have one religion good kings bad kings etc etc but the pattern which has emerged in south asia is unfortunately that for example in pakistan it is only muslim kings who are great hindu kings are non existent or coward here there is the other image just the obverse of that where the muslim kings are looked as villain and that comes up over and over again i was talking about rana pratap now did rana pratap fight for religion did he fight against akbar or muslim kings for the sake of religion for the sake of hindu community or what that i will like to understand along with you now the battle between rana pratap and akbar took place in the ground of haldi ghati in rajasthan please note in rajasthan haldi ghati there are better armies of akbar on one side rana pratap on the other surprisingly in akbar's army akbar himself is missing and in place of akbar the person who's leading the army his name is raja man singh and raja man singh is assisted by many muslim generals who are working under him so please see the composition of this army there are hindus as well as muslims in akbar's army rana pratap on this side he has a general one of the important generals called hakim khan sur so i try to understand with you on this side also there are hindus are also there there are muslims are also there so please tell me this battle between akbar and rana pratap is it a battle between hindus or muslims or is it a battle between two kings it is a battle between two kings is it a battle for religion or is it for power it's for power and we are mistakenly saying our great rana pratap and evil akbar etc etc those sort of things come up when i am talking of this i have also reminded two more things about akbar i hope you know all that akbar had nine jewels nine ratnas in his darbar two of these nine ratnas who were very important in akbar's court they were hindus please try to recall those names and birbal birbal will instantly strike your mind what will not strike your mind immediately is a more important king his name is raja todarmal why i think raja todarmal is more important than birbal because raja todarmal in akbar's court was doing the same thing which mr arun jetli is doing today in modi sarkar so you can't have a more important courtier and this is what we see in that film now same thing which we when we talk about akbar of course there are other kings also who we may not be as good and in akbar's case i remind you another thing in akbar's castle please note in akbar's castle there was a temple yes or no yes, yes. which god's temple was there lord shri krishna 
and when krishna janmashtami was celebrated akbar was participating in that or boycotting that he was participating that number one now i come to our own maharashtra in our maharashtra we had a very great king who is very much revered by most of the people of maharashtra you can guess his name is chhatrapati shivaji maharaj we all know because of our railway station shivaji our airport shivaji our vada pav shiv vada pav so anyway we shivaji is everywhere we respect him a lot but some people try to tell us that he was anti muslim i must tell you shivaji respected all religions equally and i'll give the evidence of that there is a very popular story in maharashtra where people try to bring in violence between hindus and muslims in the name of battle of shivaji with afzal khan they try to present as if a hindu shivaji has killed afzal khan but the story is totally different let me tell you when shivaji was going to meet afzal khan he was going without any armaments and one of his bodyguards told him that don't go without armaments and the name of that bodyguard of shivaji was rustame jamal shivaji had 18 bodyguards with him 12 of those godly bodyguards were muslim shivaji's confidential secretary was maulana haider ali and in shivaji's army there were 12 generals who were in charge of his cannon division who was in charge of his navy who were muslims ibrahim gardi siddi sambal daulat khan all these are the generals of shivaji so this is the shivaji side now shivaji on the advice of this bodyguard wears those iron claws which we call bag nak in hindi he goes and when he goes there afzal khan attacks him shivaji kills him with his bagnak and when shivaji kills him at the, that time afzal khan secretary comes out takes out his sword and tries to kill shivaji the name of this secretary please remember was krishna ji bhaskar kulkarni so again i want to ask you is it a question of hindu muslim or is it a battle for power battle for power and we are all very mistaken great hindu kings versus evil muslim kings and that's what where i also would like to bring in another king from south india because we are missing south india in the whole story and there was a king named tipu sultan from last many years people are saying oh tipu sultan such a tyrant he converted so many he killed so many brahmins he did this he did that so i must tell two particular incidents about tipu sultan once maratha armies went to attack tipu sultan now there was a battle between maratha army and tipu sultan and somehow maratha armies could not win and tipu sultan could meet could not be defeated i hope you know that in our cricket also two may two teams win sometimes there is a draw the battle became a draw maratha armies are frustrated they are coming back and in their anger they destroy the temple in shri rangapatnam please note maratha army is destroying a temple and that temple was restored by tipu sultan now why maratha army is destroy a temple are they against hinduism are they insulting hinduism no they are insulting tipu sultan and why does tipu sultan get it repaired because he no king can rule unless he respect the sentiments of his people similarly people say tipu sultan killed so many brahmins of course there are records are like that in british custody i'll tell you the reason for that also but i basically doubt that why i doubt that because the chief advisor of tipu sultan was a person called purnaiya purnaiya was he a hindu he was a brahmin with purnaiya as the prime minister of tipu sultan would he dare to kill others just for the sake of conversion i'll come to the question of conversion before that let me tell you tipu sultan was so respectful of shankara chare the of kanchi kam koti pitham that he used to address as jagat guru he gave lot of donation to shringeri math etc etc so here we come to the question of why why temples were destroyed please note friends temples were destroyed temples were destroyed by hindu kings temples were destroyed by muslim kings but why why to insult the religion not at all there are two major reasons i am just summarizing one was temples were repositories of wealth yes or no they were repositories or they are all today also repositories 
Sometimes I feel if the social problems have to be solved, all this wealth which can be used for the poor people, 90% of the problems will be solved. Anyway, I am not in a position of power, so I ignore that point. So temples are destroyed. We talk about Mahmud Ghaznavi destroying Somnath temple. When Mahmud Ghaznavi was coming to Somnath temple, on his way, there were hundreds of temples. He did not touch them. Why? Because they did not have wealth. And what was in Somnath? Somnath had the wealth of 151 crores of rupees in the found of form of 20,000 golden dinars. So there lies the uh, clue. Similarly, recently in Delhi, a name of a road was changed. I am not supporting any king. Please note, I am against kingdoms. I want the best of democracy. So, road of the name was changed. Aurangzeb, very bad. Of course, I know before I, I describe him further, once I happened to be go to Pakistan eight years ago for a seminar. Don't worry, I came back safe. <laughs> now, there I asked them, who is the greatest king who has ruled this part of the country? They said, oh, it was of course Aurangzeb. Same Aurangzeb looked at in one light there, another light here. Of course, he once destroyed, happened to destroy Kashi Vishwanath temple. Reasons are multiple, I will not go into that. But at the same time, there is a book by Dr. Vishambarnath Pandey, which tells us how many temple donations were given by Aurangzeb. Three of the temples, I'll remind you. One is uh, in Guwahati, near Guwahati, Kamakya Devi Temple. In Ujjain, Mahakal Temple. In Uttar Pradesh, Vrindavan, Lord Krishna's Temple. Three places he gave heavy donations. So as rational people, we should think, why was he just a temple destroyer? Or was he also giving a donation to the temple? Similarly, we think that Islam, very bad. Muslim kings came on the horseback, sword in one hand, Quran in the other, and they spread Islam. Let me tell you, friends, religions are not spread by kings. Every rule has an exception. As I say, religions are not spread by kings. At the same time, I will say, there is a very noble exception to this rule. One of the kings from India, who became Buddhist, later on sent all his propagators to spread the religion. He was the only king, Emperor Ashok, who spread his religion. Other kings spread power. Let's be very fundamental about it. So how does Islam come into India? Of course, there are some Muslim kings who threatened their rivals that you are religion, otherwise I will kill you. That is, that those cases are there. But by and large, the if Muslim kings where to convert the population here, Hindus would not have been left after 700 years of rule of the Muslim kings. So first, I, again I'll let you, Islam, Islam first came to India, not through Muslim kings. It came in 8th century, much before the Muslim invaders came in North India. It came on the Malabar coast through the Arab traders. And you will be surprised to know that first mosque which came up in India was on the Malabar coast. Its name is Cheraman Juma Mosque. And similarly, Swami Vivekananda and other great people tell us that it was mainly to escape the caste tyrannies that many people converted to Islam under the, under the influence of Sufi saints. While we are talking of this Hindu-Muslim, Hindu-Muslim issue, let me tell you the greatest contribution to Indian culture has been from all religions. I am very sincere about it that Indian culture is a mix. There are contributions from Islam, there are contributions from Hinduism. The highest form of this contribution comes in two great traditions of India. One of the traditions is what we call Bhakti tradition, represented by Kabir, Tukaram, Namdev, Narsi Mehta. And the other tradition is that of a Sufi tradition, Nizamuddin Aulia, Khwaja Garib Nawaz. Please, I like to request you to think that Bhakti saints were followed not just by Hindus. They are followed by Hindus as well as Muslims. And people from all religions throng the Sufi saint Dargah. So basically what I am trying to say that because of these misconceptions of history, a hatred is being generated. And hatred is the foundation based on which violence is orchestrated. And violence is the thing which polarizes a society. We have to come back to the path which Mahatma Gandhi showed us. A, which organization showed us, which the national movement showed us and it was that path 
where Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Patel, leaders are li like this, led a movement which led to the constitution of India, giving us liberty, equality and fraternity. And fraternity basically means that we love all the people of this country as if they are belonging to my family. If we have the sentiments, those people are bad, those people are those, we are great. I think we are doing a great service to the values which emerge from the freedom movement of India and which are enshrined in the constitution of India. With this appeal, I want you to look inside that all religions, morality of all religions must be respected. Principles of liberty, equality, fraternity must be respected and we should dream of a society where human rights of each and every section of society is equally respected. Thank you very much.